Howdy folks, I'm Caveman, back with another video, uh, this is going to be a short one, I know my videos tend to run a little long, so we're trying to keep this one uh, pretty short, this is going to be a more of a show and tell than a how to, uh, I'll give you a brief little description, um, we recently gotten into, I don't want to call it knife making, but uh, for lack of a better term I will, um, I don't yet have the space to safely do a forge, uh, my garage, my shop is uh, underneath my kid's bedroom, so kind of want to avoid uh, potential for a fire. So what I've been doing is buying blade blanks. There are hundreds of sites on the on the internet uh, to get these from. Um, you can get um, anywhere from Damascus steel to carbon. Um, I try to avoid the the cheaper ones. Um, try to go with 440C. Uh, it's great blade material. Most of them come sharp, um, pre-sharpened. This one I've sharpened a little more, so it actually is really sharp. This blade here, it's full tang. I try to stay away from the hidden tangs. Just I prefer this type here. They're a little bit stronger. They're going to stand up to time. This one here is 440C steel. Um, this one looked like a bit of a challenge. kind of took a gamble when I ordered it, um, simply because it has the two bolsters built in. For the trigger grip and i was worried about getting the front part of the wood front part of the handle done the way i wanted to um, basically it's real easy uh, to you can either pre-order your scales online or you can make them yourself i didn't want to go you can see here it's, it's pretty rough i didn't want to go super super fine on the sandpaper i wanted it to look a little, a little more rustic with it um, just give it you know, a little bit older finish to it. Well, like my wife says, <clears throat> excuse me, like my wife says, it looks like it's been in my tackle box for 10 or 15 years. Um, this is just some hardwood scraps I had in my, uh, my bin. I'm not even really sure exactly what type it was. I've got several in there. So, um, but basically to make yours, I've got a piece of cedar here. Um, you just run it through your saw, the thickness that you want to get. And then you'll lay your knife on there and trace out your, your design. And then you can go from there. Um, basically just uh, epoxy it on there. Throw some pins through it. You see here I've got pins that I've ground down. Um, tools that I tend to use for these for shaping the wood. <clears throat> I'll get into the sheaths here in just a second. Um, just a rasp. And then I'll use the actual metal files. And it's basically just a finer, acts as a finer grit sandpaper. You get some of the rasp marks out and gets you a little more detail. Uh, for the sheaths, I uh, I use my my trusty hand chisels. Um, they're not you know bottom dollar, but they're they're uh, they're not the most expensive find out there, but they do work well. Um, made a handle for this one here. This is the one I use the most. So, uh, with this, it's just a, I think the blade cost about $25 or $30 at the shipping. So, it's, it's, it's a good entry level knife. Um, it's comfortable, feels good. Now, for the sheath, I haven't gotten into leather working yet. That is on my list. So, I will eventually start working on leather. Uh, but for now, I want to just, you know, try to make a sheath out of wood. And there's a ton of videos out there, so just a quick recap for all right, quick uh, overview of this one here. A couple ways to do it: you take uh, it's kind of the same principle with the uh, the knife handle itself. Is you get a smaller, a couple smaller pieces. You can do one thicker and one thinner. Um, just scrap wood here, I'll show you here, and then cut your recess out completely out of the thicker one. So basically, you'll just notch it out here uh, using hand chisel router uh, I know a lot of guys that do it with routers um, I prefer the hand method at this point so um, or you can go a little more in depth like I did with this one here and you can do a equal e recess um, out of both now the tricky part with that what I found out with this one is you can see the contours on this blade it's got several angles um, as you're as you're hollowing out your sheath, 
you want to think in the reverse. So your thinner pieces, you're going to remove less wood so there's more wood hanging in there. Whereas your, your parts that stick out the most is where you're going to hollow out the most wood. So just keep that in mind, think in reverse. With this, I want to go with a tactical sheath, uh, one that could be um, mounted across your back on the belt or one hanging in traditional style. And I had some webbing left over from some tactical gear, so I figured, why not? Uh, again, this is just regular hardwood um, scraps that I had uh, with, I believe, red oak minwax. And um, it's going to be minwax um, polyurethane, spray polyurethane. So just used uh, a couple of small screws. Let's see if I can get to show you here. On this side, I've got a little bit more wood than what I've got to the top. So I was able to use real short screws, I think maybe maybe quarter inch screws, uh, just because I didn't want to trust all this weight um, of the, the sheath and the knife and then, you know it's snagging whatnot to uh, to epoxy. So I'll put a couple screws in there as well as epoxy. Um, this way you can run your belt through here to mount it horizontally or you can use these for vertical and then I use just a simple bungee tie it around the bottom nothing fancy um, and then use a little split ring you could use even an eyelet hook if you wanted to to serve as the blade retainer. Oops. So, but even with that, it is snug enough that it, I'm actually going to pull it out. So, this is more just in case it gets hung on something. And it looks like it's been wood burnt, but uh, I have to admit, just because this was a, uh, a, a prototype, um, my wife has a, a pretty good collection of stamps, ink stamps. So I sorted through those, found a couple that I liked, and stamped the wood prior to polying it. So I can never get that kind of, of detail with the writing anyways with a wood burner at this point. So that says honor and liberty, proud to be an American in a, a tattered American flag. <clears throat> and as for the bottom, the compass, use a Forstner bit. Um, on thicker pieces of wood, I'll use a paddle bit. This is a little bit quicker. Uh, of course, it will not work with the knife in it. So you do have to pull the knife out in order for it to work. But there's that. Um, it's a great little gift idea. Anybody looking for, for a special gift for a family member or a good friend? Uh, I've probably got, oh, I don't know, maybe... 10 or 15 hours, no, probably, probably closer to 15, maybe 20 hours total in this. Um, and uh, really, really happy the way it turned out. Now the next one, this one's just still a work in progress. This is a different blade, and as you see, it's quite a bit bigger. Uh, when I went home to Kentucky, I, uh, I managed to scrounge up some fresh uh, red cedar that had been cut down. And from that, gave me the idea for the handle and knife for this. Uh, this is a kukri style blade. Um, it's not full fledged kukri, but it does have that, that style. So the handle is made completely from the heart. So it is, it is red. Uh, in person, it's got some, kind of hard to see on camera, but you see some, uh, some striations in there just from the different, uh, different fibers in the wood. The camera really doesn't do it justice. It's, it's, it turned out really, really well. Uh, I'm really happy with the way the handle turned out on this one here. And this is actually the second set of handles that I put on this one. The first ones was uh, just simple um, ash. And uh, it would have worked, but like I said, I'm not in the little that the uh, leather working yet. So the leather would have worked better. But I went with the cedar this way and went with a ginormous sheath. Um, gonna give this one away for a gift, and then if I end up making another one and try to sell it, I'm gonna I'm gonna slim this down and make it a little bit more uh, lower profile. 
The whole reason for the sheath being so large is because of this large section of the handle. Gives you a lot of a lot of grip, um, a lot of flare, and it, I mean it suits the knife. The knife's uh, pretty pretty large. I think it's got a nine inch nine inch blade surface. So it's, this is a very large knife. Um, so to get the sheath to fit and look decent, it'd be pretty pretty large. But, uh, just wanted to do a little bit of a show and tell. Um, pretty happy with the both of them. Uh, they're gonna be pretty good pretty good gifts for. For some family members, I, was, I think so. And then eventually, as I get a little bit, a little bit better, my methods, then uh, I might start selling these eventually. I don't know. Get back into the, get back into my walking sticks too. I know I've gotten some comments on those. As to when I'm going to start doing those again, and uh, that will be eventually. So, again, I want to thank everybody for watching. Um, and uh, if you like it, subscribe it, share it, tell your friends, and. Uh, Try to get some more videos posted. All right. Thanks, and you all have a great day.